Morning folks, I'm Dave Canterbury with Self Reliance Outfitters in the Pathfinder School and I just got back from my 5x5 five five bush fit 5k walk, I don't know, about 30 minutes ago. Took a break, got some water. <clears throat> now what I wanted to do was I wanted to kind of discuss this kit with you guys because part of this 5x5 five five bush fit concept is that you're actually carrying a survival kit or an emergency kit or a bush crafting practice kit with you all the time on this 5k and it's a 50 pound ruck that you're doing your 5k with but it doesn't have to be 50 pounds worth of gear in this ruck if you put everything in there that you need then you can add a weight plate of some kind and we'll talk about that in a few minutes to get up to that 50 pound mark and that's exactly what I do and then if an emergency should happen you can always just chuck that plate because I buy mine at scrap yards you can buy weights at scrap yards about 35 cents a pound. So you can buy a 10 or a 13 pound plate, like a 6K plate, something like that, very, very inexpensively. And if you got into a situation where you twisted an ankle or you hurt yourself, you can always ditch the plate to reduce the weight of that pack and go back and get it later. So let's talk about what I've got in this pack because I think that's important. Okay, the first thing we should talk about here real quick is that I combined this bush fit program with things that I can do around the homestead with light, cheap equipment, like flipping tractor tires, cheap weights that I've bought from scrap yards and things like that that I can use, including barbell type weights, cinder blocks to do push-ups and sit-ups on. And then I also based it on a little bit on surplus gear, and even Horace Kephart spoke to the usefulness of surplus because it's cheap to buy and it's heavy-duty gear. So not everything in this kit has to be really expensive either. You know, I've got this beat up old sleeping pad right here that costs a couple bucks at a flea market. That's old military issue, but it works really, really well to just throw on the ground if I'm doing sit-ups, things like that. And then I've got a thermorest pad and it only costs 20 bucks down here on the bottom that I would actually use if I were out and doing an overnight. But I carry it on the pack as part of the kit. So we're just talking about the outside stuff right now. Now I've got a two quart military style canteen here and basically it's only for water on the fly, quick and dirty. I want to drink some water while I'm walking or whatever the case may be because I have a metal container in a canteen cup and set right here in the pack that we'll talk about in a minute. So that's just an extra two quarts of water and again in an emergency if you had to lighten your load it's something you could ditch off. A little bit of web strap is always going to be a good thing to have not only for lashing, tying, and binding like normal cordage, hanging a hammock if you needed to, if you didn't have hammock straps, but it's also very good for some weight resistance type training that you're using body weight resistance. We'll talk about that in other videos as well. But as far as the kit goes, you know, we obviously, we have to have the tools for the craft. We have to have tools to not only affect an emergency for survival or an emergency scenario overnight in the woods, inconvenient camping as I like to call it, or if we want to just practice our skills in general. So I've got my council tool, two pound Hudson Bay camp hatchet on here. And this is a really good hatchet. It's served me well so far. I'm really pleased with it. And it fits really good behind one of those pockets in that Alice pack. So that works out really well. In the top of my flap here, I keep a couple things. I keep my compass and my pacing beads. And again, this is just another way to track your distance. If you don't have a cell phone or something like that to track your distance, you could always use pacing beads to do that. But it's also good for my navigation. I have a map of this whole area right here. Not that I would ever get lost out here probably, but it's always good to practice your mapping skills. And then I just have a small pouch here that's got a waterproof notebook in it and all of the protractors and things to use with my map. So basically all of my navigational type gear is in the top flap of this pack. So it's easily accessible if I need it for something. It all turns sideways in there pretty easy. It tucks back in there. One of the advantages of this Alice pack is this top flap. I like that really, really well. It makes things easy to get to without having to necessarily open up the whole pack. Now let's kind of talk about these outside pockets real quick. What I've got in here is I've got a headlight. A Baco Laplander saw, a spare 5.11, and a roll of cordage. 
So that gives me a couple extra cutting tools in there that I've got quick access to, a headlight I've got quick access to, and some cordage I've got fast access to. And I think that's the important thing about packs, and that's one of the things that I like about the Alice pack and all packs that are bucket style. If you have a couple pouches on the outside that you can put things that you need to get to very, very quickly, and you don't want to open the pack, mainly what's in the pack is going to be shelter items that you're only going to use when you stop. In the center pocket, I've got a full Pathfinder canteen kit with the cup, the canteen, and the lid. So that gives me a full-on cook set and a way to disinfect water. I've also got tabs in the two-quart canteen. I've got Aquamir purification tabs, but if I can boil, that's what I'm going to do. And then in this third pouch, I've got a regular ripstop, woodland camo, surplus, poncho. That gives me rain gear on the fly if I need it really quick. All right, well, let's discuss inside the pack. At the top, I've got an extra large schmog. This just gives me a large amount of cotton material that I can use for anything from first aid to hygiene to cooling down by the creek, initial filter, all those types of things. And this is an extra large. This thing is huge. It's almost the size of a twin blanket. And I got that thing on Amazon. Then I have a dream hammock. It's the same hammock you guys have seen in other videos. That's woodland camouflage pattern with the bug net and the straps. And it all squeezes down pretty, pretty small there. So I like that really, really well. I have a large waterproof bag in here that has a 10 by 12 Defender tarp. The same tarp that I keep set up back there at my base camp. And the same camouflage pattern that this dry bag is made out of. And then in the very bottom, I have a 20 degree bag, sleeping bag. So I can switch that between a wool blanket and a bag, depending on the seasonality. But with a pad in the bottom of the hammock and a good sleeping bag, it, it, you can sleep in some pretty cold weather without an underquilt. If you need an underquilt, you can stuff one in there no problem. All right, now this back pouch back here is where I put my plate, just like this, to make sure that my pack is up to that 50 pound weight. It makes it real convenient, it gives a really easy spot to put it, centers it on the frame in the back of the pack, and centers it on your back, okay? But it drops down close to the bottom. I also have an emergency space blanket in that pocket, and just another piece of cotton material. Okay, the last thing I have in the bottom of this pouch, or the bottom of this pack, is just a canvas pouch that's got a roll of duct tape on it, in it, I should say, one inch duct tape, repair, first aid, things like that, utensils to eat with, a mill bank bag for initial filtering of water, a six inch ferrocerium rod, a cigarette lighter, waterproof matches, a fire multi-fire tool from the Pathfinder School or SRO and some iodine. So really you've got a kit here that is built to do anything and everything that you would want to do as far as simple bushcrafting and woodcrafting goes or your the initial things that you'd want to do for bushcrafting and woodcrafting. And it's built to have enough weight to it that you don't have to add a lot. You know you've got you put one plate in this thing and you've got the weight that you need. But if you added food to this and you filled this canteen with water, you're still going to get really, really close to that 50 pound weight that you're looking for, just like that. So it doesn't really matter if you're exact on the weight. What you really want to do is get close. In the 5x5 five five system, we're trying to get to a 50 pound rucksack that we're going to carry over a 5K distance. And we're going to try to do that in 50 minutes. That's the trick to it. But what you want to do is you want to make sure that this kit is built so that it effectively you can practice all of your skills with this kit. But there's also things in here like the pad that you can work out on top of so you don't have to lay on the ground. 
like strapping that you can use for resistance training. And then you can cut logs and things like that to prop your legs up on to do push-ups or elevated push-ups to do sit-ups and things like that. So you should be able to work out with this type of gear for the most part. But if you've got a few things back at the homestead you can use like tires and cinder blocks and a few weights and things like that you get from a scrapyard, that just adds to your ability to drive your fitness level to the next level. Okay, so here's our pack completely loaded on the scale without the plate and with no water. And what you're looking at there, and this is important to understand, is you're looking at 30 pounds, right at 30 pounds. So if you put a 13 pound plate in there and almost a gallon of water, that puts you right at that 50 pound mark, which is what you're looking for to build your fitness level. Because if you can walk 5K with 50 pounds in 50 minutes, then carrying a 30 pound pack like this one that's got everything you need in it, and then some, should be, be very easy. And that's the whole point with this, is that we're trying to build our bush fitness level, and at the same time have all the gear we need to practice our skills. And that's why I built this kit, and that's why I'm working on this bush fit system. So again, you've got a 30 pound pack of gear, and that's every piece of gear that we talked about in this video. So if you add food to that for a day or two, and you add some water to that, and you put a plate in the back of that thing, you're going to be right at that 50 pound mark, maybe even 51 or 52 pounds. So you'll have to adjust from there. But again, don't get too hung up on that because when you're walking, you're probably not going to carry food when you're doing your initial exercise, unless it's just a bag of beef jerky or something in case you were to get stuck. But once you add that plate and that water, you're going to be right at that 50 pound mark. And again, you don't have to use the exact same gear that I've got in this video either, but something similar that you can afford or that you prefer is important. Okay guys, so that gets us to a discussion of what's contained in this 5x5 five five bush kit. The only thing we didn't talk about really was peripheral items on my body. And I've got the typical woodcraft type carry. I've got an SAK, a Swiss Army knife, and I think this is a trucker model, attached to a lanyard in my pocket. And I've got a full tang Garberg belt knife on my hip. So I've got cutting tools attached to my body. I've always got a lighter in my pocket, and then I've got extra cutting tools and peripheral tools within this kit, and I think that's important to understand as well. So we'll get to what we do on our off days in another video because what I've been doing is I've been doing every other day, I do the 5K, 50 push-ups, 50 sit-ups, and then on the off day, I do other peripheral exercises that I can do around the homestead, either using free weights that I've bought from a scrapyard flipping a tractor tire, you know, using a cinder block or a picnic table for dips and different types of elevation and things like that. All things that you could really easily do even in the woods with logs and things like that if you wanted to. So I appreciate you joining for this video today. I thank you for everything you do for our school, for our family, for our business, for all of our sponsors, instructors, affiliates, and friends, and I'll be back with another video as soon as I can. Thanks, guys.